Good afternoon. Welcome. A very happy International Women's Day 2024 to everyone joining us live from around the world. My name is Helen Kronberger. I'll be your Study Australia host and Australian Government representative for this very special Women in STEM event. I'd like to begin this session by acknowledging the first inventors, innovators and traditional custodians of the many and diverse lands on which we're all meeting. For me, these are the Rwandri people of the Kulin Nation. I recognise First Nations traditions, practices, knowledge and resilience through many thousands of years, continuing through ongoing connections to land, waters and community. I pay my respects to elders past and present, and I extend that respect to all First Nations people joining us today. International Women's Day is one of my favourite days of the year, and we thought what better way to celebrate this great day than by introducing you to some fantastic and inspiring women in STEM. It's great to have you here. And the best part is you're free to join in with the discussion. You'll be able to see a question and answer tool on your screen on the right hand side. And it's called Slido and you can feel free to start asking questions at any time during the panel session. And then I'll come back and join you in the last part of the session to help you answer, ask your questions to our panelists. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from our distinguished panel chair, Dr. Rwangi Fernando and her most excellent panel members. I will now tell you a little bit about each of them. Dr. Fernando is an accomplished IT expert and AI specialist with a strong academic industry and consulting background. Dr. Fernando completed her PhD at Victoria University in Australia in collaboration with Data61, Australia's prestigious CSIRO and the Victorian State Government's Department of Transport. Dr. Fernando has a strong history of advocating for gender equity in STEM, especially addressing the intersectional challenges faced by women of colour. She has received numerous awards, including the STEM Women Changemaker Award by the Australian Academy of Science, the Melbourne Asian Game Changer Award by the Asia Society, and the Victorian Multicultural Honour Roll in 2023. Dr. Fernando is also the founder of STEM Sisters, Empowering STEM Women of Colour. And under her leadership, STEM Sisters has won many awards, including the Tech Diversity Business and Media Awards, both in 2023, the Victorian International Education Excellence Award, the Multicultural Excellence Award, and a WISE, W-I-S-E, grant from the Australian Government's Department of Industry, Science and Resources. But there's more. Dr. Fernando is also the founder of iSTEM Co, a research consulting and talent sourcing company that enables employment for women in STEM, including women of colour and culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. iSTEM Group recently launched DEIR, a recruit tech platform that eliminates recruitment bias for women in STEM. So if that's not enough, there's more on this panel than you can believe. Dr. Fernando will be joined by a wonderful group of international students and graduates specialising in STEM fields. So panellists, as I introduce each of you, if you could please give our audience a little wave, they'll be able to know who I'm referencing. So first, Gabriella was awarded the Global Excellence Scholarship to study Bachelor of Molecular Sciences and Master of Biomedical Science and chose to study at the University of Western Australia. As part of her studies, Gabriella completed an internship working with PhD students on developing and validating a biomarker of oxidative stress. This biomarker can be used to track inflammation and treatment efficacy in a wide variety of medical conditions. Gabriella has also worked as a new energy scientist at Woodside Energy alongside her studies. And in this role, she was focused on helping Australia reach net zero by 2050, aiming to transform greenhouse gas emissions into valuable chemicals or alternative fuels. And this work, of course, has potentially very far reaching benefits to the global efforts to address climate change. Victoria is from Bangladesh and came to Australia to study a bachelor degree in physics at Macquarie University in Sydney. 
She then received a Chancellor's International Scholarship to study at Australian National University or ANU and moved to Canberra to study a master's degree in nuclear physics. Victoria now works as an experimental physicist studying for her PhD. She's involved in two international projects working on the detection of dark matter and solving the mystery of the unknown particle. Victoria is active in her community and doing outreach on STEM and her research and recently visited 10 regional schools in Queensland to talk about dark matter and is also the higher degree research representative in her academic school at ANU. Javiera or Javi completed her PhD in conservation biology at Monash University in 2023. She also holds a bachelor degree honours in renewable natural resources engineering from Chile. Her PhD focused on how to better integrate ecosystems and ecological communities into strategic conservation planning, as well as prioritising management for threatened biodiversity. She's presented her research at several conferences, including the International Congress for Conservation Biology in Rwanda. While undertaking her PhD, she's also worked, worked as a teaching associate, associate at Monash University and as research assistant at the University of Melbourne and at Deakin University in projects investigating ecological communities and threats to those communities and the red list of ecosystems. She's also volunteered as a program, program manager on not-for-profit Future Forte and aiming to support the growth and empowerment of international students, multicultural women and gender diverse people and was awarded International Student of the Year in the research category by the Victorian International Education Awards in 2023. We're also joined by Adiba. Adiba graduated with a Master of Information Technology at Macquarie University in 2021 and now works as an Information Technology Consultant in Financial Services. Adiba is dedicated to helping businesses stay safe in the ever-changing digital world. In her current role as a Technology Risk Consultant, she helps clients improve their IT and cybersecurity posture with a focus on governance, risk and compliance. Throughout her career so far, she's participated in courses, internships, projects and hackathons that have strengthened her skills around her areas of passion. So what a privilege it is to be here with this amazing group of women. I'm now going to hand you over to our chair, Dr. Fernando, and our amazing panel, and I look forward to coming back to you for some interactive discussion a bit later in the session. Dr. Fernando, over to you. Oh, wonderful, Helen. Thank you so much for the introduction. And I was just thinking, what a wonderful panel and a, a blessing to be with, surrounded by all these talented women. Um, so thank you so much for all this brilliant introduction. So just um, because, the, you know, personally, uh, we'll be talking about some of these points. But um, what we're going to begin with is uh, because we heard a little bit of my story. So my science background comes from IT. So I've been a enthusiastic person about IT, mainly mathematics at the very early stage, and then did my bachelor's and two masters back in Sri Lanka. I've been an academic all my life uh, until, until I stepped into Australia and did my PhD. And I really saw a social problem um, about gender diversity, particularly in the STEM sector, and now becoming an entrepreneur and working in um, different other fields. Um, just because this today's audience is about understanding what opportunities are in Australia um, and then what is the same support system for particularly for women in uh, in Australia, I would like to share some of the statistics um, that would really heighten up uh, your perspective. So recently um, uh, there was a study by the Tech Council and the ACS and it says um, we will need 1.2 million additional tech workers by 2030. And just next year, by 2025, 90% of the jobs will be needing STEM skills, right? So this gives you a 
an idea of what is the kind of capacity what we are looking for in particularly in stem of course they are more related to uh, uh, technology related but like you know broadly in stem there is huge amount of opportunities as this is the international women's day and as we are focusing on the importance of having women being part of every industry including stem um currently Australia is losing one, 128 billion just because women are not fully participated in the economy, right? So what I see is not a, like, you know, you may think like this is half glass full, but I see it as a, you know, rather than an empty as a full. So there, these is potential opportunities. Only 27% women are represented in the STEM ecosystem across Australia. So to get into the power of the 50% or close to that, and then with the opportunity specifically focusing on women is huge. Right. So definitely I encourage women to come along to Australia and be part of the STEM ecosystem in Australia because there are opportunities. And then the, as the sciences, the engineering, the technology is very advanced. And, and therefore, as we are on a global mission to really empower and especially on the sustainability side of things, there are very strict sustainability goals that we have set as a country, as a region. So therefore, meeting all of these challenges is definitely we need more sciencey people. So it is definitely land of opportunities for anyone considering to study in Australia. So saying that bit of an intro, let me, because our spotlight today is this wonderful for women, you know, who have really done excellent work in so many different STEM uh, disciplines. So let me just begin by asking some interesting questions and try to dive into their journeys and understanding what they are up to and what their thoughts are. So let me begin by asking um, Victoria, right? And the question is the same for all. Why did you choose Australia and your field of study were your family and your teachers were supportive of your choice of study and what are you currently up to? Um, thank you for the question. So first of all, I'll talk about why I chose physics. Um, as a kid, I always liked to do sciencey things. I loved maths and that was, that was not a very common thing uh, to do or like um, as a girl. Um, the normal thing would be if you are good in studies, you either go to medical or those sort of um, pathways, which are very common in uh, my uh, country. Um, but I always just wanted to know why, why is things happening the way they do? And that just made me come towards physics. And I have the blessing to have a lovely supportive family who say, don't worry about what the society is telling you, follow your dream. And um, that's when I decided to come uh, outside of Bangladesh and pursue my bachelor's in physics. And uh, I came through um, educational uh, agencies. And uh, when I came here, uh, Australia was very famous. Uh, they were attracting lots of international students and there were lots of opportunities after my bachelor's as well to pursue my uh, studies in physics. And uh, I heard lots of amazing um, projects going on here. And that's what inspired me to come here in Australia. And yeah, I pursued my bachelor's in Macquarie and then came here at ANU. And we have this amazing accelerator on campus, which does world leading uh, researchers researchers from across Australia and outside Australia visit here to do their uh, experiments. And I'm very lucky to be a part of that team. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course, we are going to ask more questions. So, but we'll get the, like the basic started first. Um, how about you, Javi? Where do you, what do you, how, what are your answers for that question? Thanks, Rangni, and yeah, thank you for the lovely introduction and for providing some context for this panel. That was very interesting to hear. Um, so I'll also sort of start about my story in, in my discipline. So uh, my, I guess my 
field now is conservation biology, but um, that wasn't sort of so, um, I guess, known when I started studying, which was like 10 years ago, maybe 14 years ago now. Um, but I've always been sort of passionate about nature and about uh, protecting the environment and like being outdoors, you know, and trying to sort of contribute in my work towards a more sustainable future. But as I sort of started studying, I kind of gained more interesting and interest towards uh, nature in general or biodiversity, you know, so species, ecosystems and what we can do to protect them from all the different um, struggles and pressures in the world. So that's why I pursue my bachelor's in natural resources, sort of management and engineering. And then I kind of uh, became interested in, in more conservation, ecology and that part of things. And then my relationship to Australia actually was kind of at a nearly age. So I'm fortunate enough to have um, relatives here living in Melbourne. So my parents uh, sort of sent me on a summer holiday to spend time with them when I was 13 years old. And that kind of like, it changed my life really. Um, and I was so young, I hadn't traveled much of course, and it really opened my world and it opened my eyes to like all the opportunities that were available out there. And I like fell in love with Australia and well at that time in Melbourne and I still I'm in Melbourne so <laughs> I still love this city and I just really like you know the diversity and the multiculturalism and I don't know I just found it very very exciting to be here so that kind of brought me back again and again I, I then came back in 2014 um, while doing my undergrad as an exchange student I went to the University of Melbourne and I got to experience university life and sort of living in Melbourne more as an adult. And so then when I finished my undergrad, um, I took a little bit of time to decide what sort of path I wanted to continue on. And then I, yeah, I decided to pursue my PhD at Monash University um, in the research that I'm very passionate about. And actually, luckily enough as well, Australia is a world leader, like the academics in Australia are really well positioned and, and have very sort of advanced our field in particular of conservation biology and, and strategic conservation planning. So I'm very lucky to be at this space and yeah, and, and just be here. Oh, and in terms of my family, yes, as Victoria said, I'm, I'm also lucky that they have always been very supportive with my, I guess my career um, goals and Maybe when I was younger, they would have preferred something a little bit more traditional, like an environmental engineering more than sort of research or, or like my, I guess my back, my bachelor was more of a soft engineering that I like to call it. Uh, but yeah, they were still very supportive. It's like a very important topic, I believe in terms of sustainability and, and sort of, yeah, the future. <laughs> so yeah, that's me. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that. So how about you, Abia? What are your thoughts on uh, your field of study? And then how did your family support and your specialization? And what are you up to now? Um, really, first of all, really excited to be uh, joining um, such an amazing, such amazing uh, uh, panel of uh, women. Um, it, it's really special that we are doing it uh, on Women's Day, so that that also adds up to it. Um, so yeah, uh, to start with, um, uh, basically to start with why I chose Australia. Um, so similar to Harvey, actually, I did some of my early high school years in Australia um, as I came to Australia along with my family since my mother was doing her master's in actually ANU where uh, Victoria is studying now. So I do have a lot of memories with Canberra and um, similar to Harvey, I just fell in love with the people, the culture, the weather of Australia. And um, even after going back, I knew that um, it was my goal to come back to Australia. That's the only thing that I always um, dreamed about. Um, so yeah, uh, I went back to Bangladesh after um, doing my high school here, um, completed my bachelor's there uh, in electrical and electronics engineering. Um, and um, towards the end of my degree, um, I actually was involved in some research work around IT. 
um, uh, for which I had to write like a research paper, um, re uh, which, which was related to IT and digital image processing um, and, and things like that. So um, that eventually led me, led, led me to my interest around IT field because I could see there were so many um, like uh, unexplored topics um, in IT that was consistently being innovated, being explored every day. So um, when it was time for me to complete my bachelor's and come to Australia, I knew that I wanted to pursue a degree in IT. Um, so, so yeah, I was lucky enough to be able to come back to Australia for my master's. Um, and then it was another um, uh, set of like amazing journey being back in Australia, continuing my studies. Uh, again, towards the end of my master's degree, degree I was lucky enough to do a, a university course and an internship which actually exposed me to um, cybersecurity and risk management and basically how IT and business um, can actually bridge the gap in order to ensure that businesses are safe and secured in this you know, ever evolving um, digital um, landscape that we're in. So um, eventually, um, since I, I grew that interest, I kept trying to apply to roles um, and I was lucky enough to secure a graduate role um, up, right after my master's, um, which um, so I, I was I was really lucky in that sense that I could actually pursue um, what I uh, what I wanted to. And um, similar to Harvey and Victoria, again, I am lucky enough to have an amazing family always supporting me through the through thick and thin. So, um, uh, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm just very lucky and I think it's, it's, it's really nice to look back to the journey and it's very fulfilling that I am I, I'm involved in a career that aligns with my interests and passion. So, so yeah, um, that's pretty much my journey so far in Australia. Yeah, thanks Adiba. Of course, yes, yeah, so that's, that's one of the things that I also very impressed um, about Australia is the opportunities that you have opportunities that we come across there are endless opportunities of course like like in like anywhere you need to strive harder to find them uh, to really um, you know harness those opportunities but there are quite a lot and especially in stem i can vouch for you there are so many okay let's hear from gabriella about her journey into stem and then what she's up to and what who has been her greatest supporters so I first came to Australia actually when I was very young. This was one of the first countries outside of my home country that I visited. I went with my family, but then specifically in Perth, because that's where I am now. Um, I went there right before COVID starts, one of the holidays that we went here in Western Australia. And before that, I think I have never opened my horizon to Perth. And I think a lot of people also don't know um, when they ask like, oh, you study in Australia, whereabouts are you? Like, are you in Melbourne or Sydney? And then when I say Perth, they're like, oh, like they don't really know about it, but it's actually been amazing. And especially the beaches here in Western Australia, it's been amazing. Um, so that's the first time that I decided to look into Perth as a place to study. And that that's what made me want to live here and study here. And I choose UWA, University of Western Australia. That's where I study at right now for my bachelor's and master's. Um, it's because UWA is known for its research excellence as well. And I'm very interested, especially before I came here, it was COVID times and where I'm from, I'm from Indonesia. And when it was COVID times, it was so bad. I saw a lot of people were were dying and then we it was like this unknown like plague some somehow like just it was a really big impact in our lives um and it felt like that i've come so far now that i'm here and then like all those days have passed and that i'm actually now in the research lab and i'm actually looking into um, what my degree is bachelor of molecular sciences so i actually got to know what that is even in the context of what COVID was and then how like viruses works in the molecular level and then how vaccines work and then one of my highlights was when i worked um in my, the research lab as well at uwa working on the blood biomarker for oxidative stress which can be used to track progression of inflammation and treatment efficacy I think that was very, very interesting for me. Um, and even as a bachelor student working with like all these PhD students, it started off being really intimidating. So, so I sort of felt like, oh, I'm still not there yet. But actually, the environment here is very supportive, no matter where you come from, no matter your background, no matter 
how you are as long as you're really dedicated and you're very determined to grow and both personally and professionally i think it's a really good thing and i think as well i was very lucky that my family um especially from coming from indonesia a lot of people still have i think a very traditional they're very traditional minded that they think that maybe girls shouldn't work in these kind of fields or maybe you don't need to study abroad or things like that but my parents are very supportive of me even though especially for my mom it was kind of hard for her to kind of let go and like okay do your own thing like she still calls me a lot and she still really misses me and I think um it's different for me as well my situation here is like when I come here I don't have any relatives or I don't have any family here but I think I'm really lucky as well from my friends that I have a lot of support here that they have become like family to me here. They really help me out, especially when I need to move and I need to look at accommodation. Like I'm really becoming an adult because before when I first came here, I just finished like my my high school and then now everything is just coming to me. But I think it's really amazing here. And I've come so far along in my journey, especially in women in STEM. And even today, um, International Women's Day, um, I came from a bracelet making. Um, it was an event that I came into and then they had cupcakes and then like we we're, we're very celebrated here as well. And I think I really feel that support here. Wonderful. Lovely to hear from all of you, your journey to date, because I think more than anything, you like being women, we know like, you know, the gender parity uh, in just in the pay gap, just, just a, a gender parity across the world, just to balance it out. We are looking at 131 years. We won't, none of us will live if we really go ahead in that timeline. But I think we can really make things happen. Then one of individually for women to really prosper their families or like, you know, their immediate partners and all of that support is so essential. So having that, I love to hear that you all have that. And also this is something that we need to really nourish as a society so that we really give that opportunity for women to succeed. Moving on to the next question. I know you all touched upon your current careers, your studies. If in a nutshell, if you, if you are being thrown at the question asking about what is your highlight of your current study or your studies or your, um, you know, your work, what that would be, what is kind of your turning point in, in terms of your career uh, studies or your current career? Yes, we'll start with um, Will Javi. Yes. Okay, thanks for having me. Um, so for me, I think, well, there are a few highlights, but if I have to um, sort of focus on one, I think the people that I've met throughout my studies have been pretty amazing. Um, I think, yeah, during my PhD, I've sort of come across quite a lot of networks and support systems that have, have been very important to me. So both people from my field. So I've been lucky to attend um, quite a few conferences and the people that you meet there um, from like the ecology field, they are all very passionate and very inspiring and sort of dedicated to the work they do. So that really, really inspires me and sort of, um, yeah, push me to keep working. And, and I've loved meeting that people in that space, but also I think uh, meeting people from other networks as well, you know, such as your network, um, STEM sisters and, you know, a bunch of others like Future Forte, where I'm a part of now. So I guess not in my specific field, but from these other kind of professional networks um, has been really valuable and a real highlight. Just, just being able to connect with like-minded people, whether it's in your field or just in other sort of interests and values um, has been a great opportunity um, and something that I really value here in Australia. Yeah. Thanks, Yave. What about you, Victoria? Um, I would say if I have to pick one, um, is working underground. Um, so right now, one of the projects that I'm working on, uh, we are making the first uh, physics underground laboratory uh, in uh, Stowell, Victoria. It's uh, inside a gold mine, and it's one kilometer deep underground, and I am one of the few people who get to go there with all the extreme trainings and assemble, like commission this dark matter detector to like see if 
uh, we can see dark matter and yeah, like that process of getting all those trainings and actually being in the lab um, underground, it was very intimidating at the first. Like uh, when you have to go inside the mine, there's this tiny tunnel and that's the only tunnel inside and outside the mine. And um, the first time when I went, it was so scary. But once I was in the lab and I saw the place where the detector will be, it was just so exciting. And that kind of motivates me to even work harder and just to look forward what's next. And yeah, I, I would say that's one of the main highlights of working at unique places um, where I would not um, be able to work if I was not doing my uh, research in nuclear physics. Okay, perfect. What about you, Gabriela? Um, I think it's really interesting for me that I get to really be really hands-on in my degree because my major is in biochemistry and physiology. So say in biochemistry, I'm looking at things at a molecular level. And in my studies, we work with things like viruses or we study things like in a really molecular level compared to physiology where we look at organs or muscles. So say one of the research labs that we did in physiology was we worked with a cane toad and we dissected the cane toad. So I felt like a surgeon then. And I think I haven't really experienced that before. And it was really interesting. We tried to take out the muscle and then all the human labs as well that we have in physiology or in my anatomy units. And then when I worked in the research lab in my internship as well, where it felt like I was really driving change, even though it was such a small part, but I participated in that, in making the blood biomarker. And um, other than that, I also had my internship. So I had an internship where I worked at um, transforming carbon into alternative fuels or useful products. So in there, I actually look at the different bioreactors. So yeah, I think a lot of research that I did, it was really interesting for my degree. Yeah, okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, just before we go to Adiba for asking her experience, for me, if I say so um, about this, um, very similar to Javi, I think it was the opportunities and the people that who came along. And especially, um, you know, converting myself a pure academic, you know, never thought of becoming an entrepreneur, that particular concept, of course, I drive for a social change, but that concept was blossomed um, in Australia for me. So I think for that is kind of my turning point in, in this journey. So let's hear from Diba, what is yours? What has been that uh, moment of, uh, or you know, the unique experience that got you to really get into this career? Yeah, it was really interesting to hear uh, the experience of uh, Victoria and Gabriela. Uh, for me, it was not uh, like a specific pinpointed event that could be the highlight. Rather, what, when I look back, I remember those chunks of highlights that actually led me to where I am today. Because uh, if I try to, um, I feel like, find one specific event, it, it might not be fair to the other a special, such amazing things that happened to me through, throughout my time in Australia. So um, I think to start with, I think the highlight uh, during my master's degree was um, definitely uh, starting with that nervousness and then, um, you know, uh, being um, like surprised when I am, uh, you know, I get a good grade. And then eventually, um, when I got offers for internships and, um, you know, hackathons and um, additional project offers and things like that, that, that additionally made the experience even more, um, I'd say, hands on um, in the sense that I was able to present uh, one of my research work um, in a conference at Melbourne. Um, so, um, so I was, I was really lucky to have that um, opportunity uh, while um, studying for my master's as well. Uh, and then moving forward, I think even something um, uh, like so something like having a part-time job for the first time during COVID, which Gabriela was mentioning, um, even that was a big deal uh, during COVID. And um, not just because it was COVID and everything, like there was lockdown everywhere, but also because um, 
I got the confidence uh, to, you know, um, that to have that real world experience in Australia. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, because I, I, it's funny that uh, my first role uh, in Australia was a COVID-7 ambassador. So we would basically keep people, uh, you know, I mean, ensure people are um, like ensuring uh, distance, like one meter distance that we were ensuring. So, so yeah, COVID in a way um, really changed the perspective for, for me personally. Uh, even when I had my full time role, um, that was the first day of lockdown, uh, which was my first day of my full time role. So, so it, it's it's been like you know those highlights and um, my family being so excited for all my uh, achievements or anything that I do. So all those small um, events and you know um, happiness that that adds up to the highlight of my experience here. And just to um, you know add up to it, my my current role. Uh, it just, um, you know, makes me um, so, uh, like, I'd say, I feel so grateful every day. Um, I learn so, so much every day. Every day is like a highlight here. Um, I even get to, got to visit like a data center where we got into a big, big size data center where lots and lots of data center would be there, how they're managed and things like that. So um, it, it really made me, uh, you know, um, look back and see how far I've come. Uh, and yeah, I think um, in terms of highlight, I, I feel like there is a highlight almost every week that I experience in Australia. I mean, it's, it's just always mostly positive that I can mention. So the list is probably never ending. Okay, perfect. That's great to hear that you continue to have that inspiration and, and that the moment of really pursuing your passion um, in, in STEM. Okay. Now, uh, because it's International Women's Day and, and we are women in STEM, what are your thoughts that, uh, what do we need to do in, in order to attract more women? Because we know this is not just an Australia problem, this is a global problem. It's not just a problem that, that all this, you know, we, are, we need women, we need to women to be participate. It's kind of unfair. It's not that thought. You know, if we are, if I just share you a few things, only just in 2022 was the first time a woman dummy was used in crash for crash testing for vehicles. Non thing like, you know, if we are supposed to meet an accident, we are, you know, there's high chances of a woman being dying over a man, you know, because it was never looked into. And we are a 50% population in the world, you know, so you're not being considered for products or services. Starting from there, there is so many inequalities, right? And the problem is not they are just affecting women, they're affecting everyone. I told, I shared some of the statistics, how important women's contribution to the economy. So having women in STEM, having women um, participating in STEM, being part of STEM is not just an agenda for women, it's for everyone and the benefits is for the entire society. And more than anything, because it's STEM and we are focusing on innovation, innovation is significantly driven by diversity. Because nowadays with all the technology advanced months you know if you are not having like you know it's not just not just you know hypothetical profits you know the study shows up to 35 percent you can increase profit if you're really diverse if you're really reflective of your society that is including women all the intersectional types of women non-binary individuals this uh, ability individuals everyone you know having that is so important otherwise companies or governments or will end up like companies like Kodak or not here, you know? So it's so important that we address this. So let me ask, what do you think? What are the ways that we can attract more women into STEM? Yeah, let's start with um, Victoria. Yeah, um, I think for me, the main thing is visibility. Because um, if I don't, like there's a saying that if you don't see, you can't. Um, and I think that's one of the first steps to just, for all of us who are currently in STEM, just be more visible and share your journey with anyone and everyone. And that's been my motto for the last few years. I'm trying to be um, more involved in outreach. Um, reaching to schools and going to school kids, talking to them. And the sometimes the first uh, question they would ask is like, oh, how do you become a scientist? Because sometimes it's a very alien idea that, oh, what is 
being a scientist. Um, so yeah, I would say that more visibility, more um, sharing of stories and just being confident of who you are, because doesn't matter which field we are in, we are all amazing. Everyone is unique and we have to celebrate that. Yeah, perfect answer. Can't, can't agree more. Yeah. Let's hear from Gabriela. What are your thoughts? I think I really agree with Victoria that visibility is incredibly important. I think mainly what we need is to spark the interest within the community to show the value in working in the STEM field. Um, especially like the people here um, who are working in technology or medicine or even Victoria looking at um, nuclear. <laughs> That's really interesting for me. And I actually have never met um, another woman who is in that field and is really interesting. And so how our talents can contribute to concrete change in the world and the mission that each of us have that can have huge impacts in making a better world. Um, it's also important to showcase women in science, um, for example, in career day to, for example, young girls, because I find this very empowering and broadening for our views. Like Victoria said, um, being a scientist was a very like alien idea. That's what she, <laughs> to quote her. And I think I agree on that. When I was really young, I think, I only know the really stereotypical jobs like, oh, being a doctor or something like that. And even that, I think it's very gender assumed. Like if you are a doctor, then you're assumed as a male. And then if you are a female, then you become a nurse. I think it's very stereotypical. And I think it's really, really important for us to break that stereotype because that's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah, agreed. Perfectly said. But about you, Harvey, what, are, what do you think? Yeah, well, first of all, I totally second what Victoria and Gabriela said. Um, I definitely agree. Um, so I guess just to add something uh, different, I think introducing girls, like younger girls, to STEM subjects from a young age is, is pretty important. So sort of trying to um, promote um, like more engaging or hands-on activities to provide this sort of experiential learning, which I think in my experience, when I was going through school, I didn't have as much. And yeah, totally what Gabriela was saying, like how you immediately put stereotypes and you put sort of um, gender roles into the different fields. So I think if you can both sort of inspire young girls from early ages, but also increase representation so they can see themselves um, with role models um, that can definitely sort of create change into um, promoting girls and women to pursue these careers. I think also um, kind of just um, continue sort of providing or like like creating a supportive and welcoming environment and, and support services, you know, like mentoring or like different opportunities, which I know STEM Sisters is doing such a great job in promoting and, and offering this sort of different uh, support networks. So yeah, overall, I think just um, a stronger focus in the younger generations in encouraging and inspiring curiosity um, would be pretty important to attract more females into STEM, which is so varied as well, you know, you don't have to be in, like there are so many different fields and career opportunities within STEM. So I think it's pretty much, yeah, for everyone's taste. Agreed, yes. And then Adiba, what do you think? I think everyone has uh, mostly uh, summarized the, you know, the points that we should definitely highlight. I think um, I just want to mention two points um, that I think might help um, everyone in the call today with us. Uh, first is I think um, attending as many of uh, any as many events like this as possible for sure. Like you know, first of all, arranging from our end uh, as many uh, events as possible like this, and then on the student side um, as well, um, just try to attend um, all these kind of career workshops that Gab Gabriela mentioned about. Um, and just be informed, like it doesn't have to be like, you know, that you have to do it, but just join and see if you like uh, any aspect or anything that any of the panelists or any of the speakers mention uh, and just build up from there. Um, that's one of the things that's very, I think, um, personally helped me because I 
I used to like every week whenever there was a career workshop at my uni, I would just like, you know, join all of them um, irrespective of, you know, whether that was my interest or not, because I never know it might, uh, you know, um, stem an, an interest in me and I, I might also learn something from that. So I think having that learning mindset is very important. And from uh, an organization perspective, as I said, like organize as many um, talk, talk, you know, like, um, like workshops as possible. Uh, and second point is definitely the mentorship that I, I, I think uh, is, is a highlight, is, is very, very important because sometimes attending these workshops, uh, we might not always get um, uh, like a whole view of what's happening uh, in the, you know, STEM uh, landscape um, in the sense that um, I personally uh, was uh, part of the Cisco Mentor Me uh, program. So it was for three months. I was with I was paired with one of the Cisco uh, employees who was a woman in STEM, and we basically had a call every week. Um, I would basically just, um, you know, uh, maybe list down a list of questions around what I think are some of the issues I'm facing um, as a woman in STEM, uh, what has she learned throughout her journey, um, anything that I should keep in mind. So I think every week I thought, you know, I have to be very structural, but in there it ended up being such a like uh, such a learning and such a, uh, I'd say, uh, you know, useful experience for both of us. Like sometimes even I was telling some of the things she wasn't aware of that was happening, uh, you know, around uh, stereotypes um, in for women in STEM and, you know, how to navigate the whole landscape and things like that uh, so so yeah i think um first of all as i said the workshops really help but then if you can identify um or you know uh, have give more expand on the mentoring opportunities i think that would really um help the coming generations to um really maximize on the opportunities and you know the knowledge that we all have and we just want to share <laughs> so we just need those uh you know spaces to ex uh, expand on our discussions yeah yeah, perfect. Actually, um, Diva was answering our next question too in, in her answers, which is great. So because we all have arrived in Australia as international students, we wanted to highlight on some of the support services that was provided because, of course, we are someone new to this country. It's a whole new experience, you know, in that in mind of all of that, we need to excel in our studies, think about our career path, really, really progress. So there is a lot in our plate, of course, any international student, anyone who might have been in this path but there are a lot of support services i can be a little biased on what i do but still i would like to say that because uh, we were kind of the first and was only um, in most cases so stem sisters is a non-for-profit really geared to supporting women of color in stem um, we were the first to touch upon the intersectional challenges or opportunities that is needed for women in stem and particular attention when we say women in stem for uh, you know women of color in stem we were looking at um, migrants and and also international students temporary visa holders we were open to anyone i was an international student myself and i i started this journey as an international student so through that we provide so many support services you know the mentoring that we, we were talking about not that all universities are not providing mentoring but what we provide for a woman of color or international student who come from a different linguistically background is someone who looks like them who have been in their shoes what unique challenges that they have faced and how can we can benefit from that ambassador programs we have a magazine to touch upon the um what victoria is saying about sh showcasing women we have an award-winning magazine that we put across and we are only selling like you know we are focused on celebrating all diverse women and not just in their top-notch journey international students uh, doing their phds and all of that so these are like and there are many other services i don't want to touch upon but please uh, visit our website uh, if you want and then through my other companies what i do is to really find employment opportunities for women who have have their studies who have either migrated who have come as international students and we really give them that opportunity because it's a new country and sometimes you are not aware about these opportunities and that's how we support but if there is any way that i can be helpful but i i know that you know we will listen from other other uh, our panelists also about how their universities or any other organization who have really contributed to their journey and how that has shaped you yeah we'll start with gabriella yeah i think generally as an international student i feel that i have a really good support system here in australia 
especially um, as I mentioned before, when I came first, um, it was right after COVID times and I had just graduated high school. So I was feeling really like alone when I first came here. Um, but when I first arrived, I was greeted by Study Perth and I was actually a student ambassador for the 2023 cohort as well. And this is because when I first came here, they were the first people to greet me. And it was a small welcome pack that they give out at the airport. Um, however, it, it seems like such a small thing, but it really have a huge impact in me because it was the first time that I was feeling really alone because I had left behind my family and my friends and everything that I had known. And I've come to this like new strange country and it really helped me get a sense of belonging. And I really feel welcomed in this in Australia. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of the events that Study Birth has also, um, for example, Taste of Indonesia or Taste of Sri Lanka, which is like all our cultural events that we try to bring in, for example, in Taste of Indonesia, we have performances of the dances from Indonesia. We have Indonesian food. We have the activities that we just get a taste of our culture. And then it really feels like home. And it is a big part of the reason why I decided to become an international student ambassador when I was in 2023 cohort before. Um, other than that, I think it really helped that if you are in uni, um, do join some of the clubs, maybe people that have similar interests with you. For example, if you're in science, then you join Science Union or, of course, STEM sisters, like Dr. Ruangi has mentioned. So I think it's really important to surround yourself with like minded people, but also as part of the international community here. I think a lot of my friends are from different parts of the world, and it's really amazing how we get to meet all these different people from different cultural backgrounds, and it really enriched my experience here. Perfect. Let's quickly hear from uh, Victoria as well. What are her thoughts? Um, I think one of the support systems that I really appreciated um, is the mental health care. Uh, I really love how um, like the two universities I have been, they are very supportive in the mental health care. And coming from my uh, background, that was not a very familiar um, thing to think about for me. And uh, like as international students, you lose all your support system that you have built throughout your uh, life. And coming here, all of a sudden, you are all by yourself. So having that support of mental health and all the uh, university uh, staff members so supportive to give us access to all the support systems, especially uh, around mental health uh, has been amazing because um, yeah, it can be very challenging um, leaving your country, uh, but we are very lucky to have all these supports um, especially like universities, they have free mental health uh, support, lots of buddy programs. Uh, one of the um, things they do is uh, walking buddies. You just walk with people um, who are in your similar boat and these small things can change your whole experience. And yeah, that has been a very support, like really a, a highlight uh, in the support systems I have seen. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I encourage every international student use all the opportunities given by their university. That's their first cheerleader when you come to Australia. Use the maximum because there's so much wonderful opportunities given by every university that I know of. Yes, Javi, what are your thoughts? Yeah, continuing on that line, I think two services that I would like to highlight are, yeah, I, I was going to say um, university sort of graduate association. So uh, I studied at Monash and the Monash Graduate Association, it's a great platform sort of not only for like advocacy and, and mental health, because they do provide a lot of support of, to students if you have any like issues with like exams and things like that. So it's for both master's and PhD students, um, but they also provide a lot of like um, events and, and things that you can participate where you can meet other people, make, make friends and 
Yeah, they offer like a bunch of free things, like free lunches, free, you know, groceries and, and things that can come in handy when, you know, as an international student, you sometimes struggle a little bit financially at times, but um, it is really great. And together with that, as Gabriela said, study Melbourne, at least in Victoria, it is also a great, great service that I wish I had known sooner in my studies, because again, they also provide a bunch of sort of events and career development workshops and all of these sort of opportunities. And also both the university and study Melbourne provide volunteering opportunities as well, which is like such an amazing way to increase your networks, uh, develop more skills, meet more people and have fun as well. So yeah, I definitely highlight those two. Yeah, perfect. As I'm aware of, every state across Australia has has a study Melbourne or study uh, Victoria, like, you know, study New South Wales. So I think shout out to all of them who are really supportive of international students. So uh, you are being given a support network. So what I encourage is international students to use them. Because we are with time, I wanted to see whether we have some questions and uh, bring Helen back. To, so that we can answer some of the questions from the audience. Hi, thank you. It's been such a wonderful discussion and thanks so much to those engaging with us in the chat and Slido. There is a great question here about, uh, I will read it exactly as written, are STEM disciplines evolving with innovation? I'm currently involved in computer graphics and when I see the amount of codes and procedural simulations we have to do, and with the emergence of AI, I wonder how this is considered in the STEM field. So the evolution uh, with AI and the impact on all of your fields. So would anyone like to have a go at answering that one? Um, because I'm a technologist, I think I will take, I think Abiba would also have some um, information to share. Of course, with, with AI, they it's actually turn around a lot of tables, you know. So in any industry, it's not just this graphics, in surrounding so many. But I think the authentic creativity is something that is not replaceable in any sense. So what it is, is, you know, we can, I see as a technologist, I see technology as enabling in so many good ways, right? So it's not a point of thinking, oh, this is, like, you know, it's not going to happen. It, it's happened and it will continue to happen, right? So how do we understand our creativity in any field and then use the technology to the maximum to really bring that out? So you need to cultivate your creativity within yourself. Think out of the box because that's something the computer can't do at the moment and will not be able to do either. So it's just any field doesn't matter if you are really passionate. So you need to really see within yourself what you are really aim to do, because in this day and age, what is in the future, you are not going to be dictative of anything. If you are near, not authentic of yourself, it's nothing would like, you know, machines can replace basically in everything apart from your authenticity. So therefore, it's what you need to bring is that. So if you focus on it, there is a place for you. Your particular person is, is here for a reason and therefore you have a space. Be you and you'll get your spotlight. What a wonderful response. Would any of our panelists like to add a comment? I think I can uh, just quickly add um, that agree with uh, Ruangi that um, just because, uh, you know, there's AI innovation or there's, you know, uh, any kind of upcoming innovations or new age, um, you know, technology that's coming up, uh, that shouldn't um, stop us from, um, you know, pursuing our passion or, you know, um, giving it a go just because um, I think um, what's been happening is um, what could also happen or in the future is that, uh, for example, since you're uh, interested in graphics, for example, it could be the case that uh, the you know quintessential graphics like you know the that that used to happen early in earlier years it might not be the same uh, going forward it could be that it could um, uh, ai could take off some of the coding that you're talking about but then there should there will definitely be an, a, a big chunk of work that that needs human mind and human analysis and you know human uh, 
um, I'd say, um, you know, art or any kind of innovation that you're talking about. So I think there will always be that human aspect um, uh, at required for um, whatever uh, field you're talking about. Uh, so even though AI might take over some parts of it, I think um, if, if we are not at a point where, you know, it, it's going to completely be taken over by AI anytime soon. So um, yeah, just, just be have an open mind and keep learning and keep, uh, you know, keep growing. Well, they're wonderful final words. And because we are right on time, I am going to say thank you to everybody who has joined in. Thank you for even the emojis and thumbs up and things coming through. Thanks for the questions. Please do have a look at our website if you need any help. But we will be writing blogs based on your questions. So don't lose heart if you haven't had exactly the answer that you needed. And I especially hope that you will all join me in thanking our panel. So grateful to have you here and Dr. Fernando for your expert chairing. And I would like to end the session with a quote from the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who has a special message for International Women's Day 2024. He says, gender equality in science is vital for building a better future for all. He also says that women and girls belong in science. It is time to recognize that inclusion fosters innovation and lets let every woman and girl fulfill her true potential. So thank you very much for being here and I wish you a wonderful rest of International Women's Day 2024. Bye for now. Thank you.